Today I want to show you the incredible new crafting system I made for Cubus. It allows the player to create any tool they can imagine, whether it's useful or not. But let's start at the beginning of my journey. What makes an interesting crafting system? Is it clicking and searching through menus? Nah, that's not fun. Hmm, how about requiring a specific pattern, like in Minecraft? Well, this seems like a fun idea, but actually this just requires you to memorize a specific pattern. That's not fun either. I think for an interesting crafting system, the player should be given creative freedom, but every action they make should influence the quality of the final result. A specific idea started to form. I want to still use a grid-like crafting system, but instead of having fixed recipes, I want the game to figure out by itself what the player wanted to make, how it looks and how good of a tool it is. For that I think a 5x5 grid is perfect. Because, well, first of all, 5x5 allows for a lot of possibilities, but I think a larger grid would be kind of overwhelming for the player. And additionally, 16 is divisible by 5. I think a good way to start is by making the outline of the texture. If I don't have an outline, I can screw the idea. Well, where do I start? I think I can just start by drawing the grid points in the texture. It's not that hard. So, how do I connect them? Hmm, I could try to use some potential functions and add them together, which takes me hours to implement. But no, that doesn't look good. Hmm, I think I need to do something simpler. What if I just connect them directly? Yeah, doesn't look that bad. Let's try crafting a pickaxe. Hmm, that doesn't really look like a pickaxe. I think it needs some sharp tips. I think I can just try to detect the curvy pattern that leads up to the tip and add an additional pixel at the front. Yeah, that looks better, but I think the binding could be a bit more bulky. Well, I can just try to detect the neighborhood of the binding and make it bulky if there is a big neighborhood. Yeah, that looks better. Alright, now let's try some other tools. Well, actually, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, the shovel could be a bit better, but I think the rest is pretty good. I think I'll take this. Okay, that was easy. Well, it took me some time, but it wasn't really as complicated as I expected. Well, I guess I can move on to coloring now. Alright, I think I can just find the nearest grid point for each pixel and color accordingly. Ooh, there's a lot of conflicts. Hmm, how can I resolve them? Well, I could just try choosing randomly. Nah, that doesn't look good. Hmm, I need to find a way to prioritize some of the neighbors. Hmm, I could do it by counting its neighbors. Ah, that's a good idea. Well, let's see how it looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. There's still a like, few conflicts, but I think I can just choose randomly in that case. Okay, that's done as well. Now I just need to do some shading and I'm done with this. Right, what's the simplest way to shade something? Hmm, well, I could just count pixels in the direction of the light. Ah no, that has too many artifacts in it. I think I need to take a more realistic approach here. I think I can just generate a height map and use its gradients to determine how the pixel shaded. And for the height map, I could really just count neighbors. 
Yeah, that looks pretty good. There's still a small issue with this approach. Take a look at the gems on the X, for example. They look like they are perfectly flat. But in reality, I'd expect there to be some kind of gap between two different materials. Well, what can I do about that? I can just subtract a random number from the height map when there's more than one different neighbor. Well, that looks pretty good. Alright, now there's one thing missing and that's roughness. But for that, I could really just overlay a, a noise map. With the textures done, I only need to add some seemingly realistic tool properties. Simple properties like mass, durability and moment of inertia are easily calculated by summing them up over all pixels of the texture. Preparing for future animations, I'm also determining the handle position. For that, I simply try to detect a specific crafting pattern in the bottom most row of the crafting grid. For the efficiency calculation, I decided to use two properties. The swing time, which is the time between two consecutive hits on a block, and the power, which determines how much damage is done per hit. The exact calculation of these values is out of the scope of this video. If you are interested in it anyways, you can take a look at our GitHub. With all that done, I started playing around a little bit with the new system. And I found a few abuses. For example, you can make one big square and it happens to be the optimal shovel. To at least partly fix this, I gave an efficiency boost if a tool has a handle. Now this doesn't fix the issue, but at least the optimal shovel now has a handle. I also found this tiny pickaxe, which happens to be super fast. To fix this, I didn't want to change the efficiency calculation, so instead I added a trade-off between durability and efficiency. That's all I have for you today. Of course, this is not the only change that was made to Cubis during that time, but I think it was the most notable one and because I don't want the video to be super long, I decided that's enough. If you have an idea how I can make this system even better, feel free to write a comment, I'd appreciate that. The new version is getting released today and as usual you can download it using the Cubus Launcher, there's a link in the description.